This chart is found in the book One in Hope and Doctrine by Kevin Botter and Robert Delney, which tells the history of many of the streams of Baptist fundamentalism in North America. The chart shows the separate development of different groups which would be called fundamentalist and Baptist. For example, the current stream of Baptists that would identify with the teaching of Jack Hiles or the Sword of the Lord are over here. These today are mostly King James only and often go by the name of Independent Fundamental Baptist. However, separate streams of independent Baptists came from a history in the Northern Baptist Convention, producing, for example, the General Association of Regular Baptist Churches and the Conservative Baptist Association of America, today known as the Venture Church Network. One of these groups was the Fundamental Fellowship, formed in 1920. Those in the fellowship were still in the Northern Baptist Convention, but when it became apparent the fundamentalists were losing the battle there, they withdrew from the NBC, and the Fundamental Fellowship was renamed to the Conservative Baptist Fellowship in 1946. In 1967, it became the Fundamental Baptist Fellowship, and in 2001, the Fundamental Baptist Fellowship International. In 2017, the name was changed from Fundamental Baptist Fellowship International to Foundations Baptist Fellowship International. Of the name change, they said, The concern is not with the idea of being fundamentalists. That identity is the core of who we are. We are not even shy about using the name or term. We wear it proudly. But in an age when the term is so misconstrued, we want to give ourselves the opportunity to define it. Officially, FBFI is a fellowship of individuals and not of churches. They have stated that they have an undenominational structure. FBFI in its statement of faith affirms one God in three persons, the divinity of Jesus, his virgin birth, death as a substitutionary sacrifice, his resurrection, ascension, and present ministry as high priest. There is a future judgment, everlasting conscious punishment for the wicked, and eternal conscious blessedness for the righteous. There are two ordinances, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Baptism is by immersion, only for believers and not infants, and is a prerequisite to church membership. The Lord's Supper is a commemoration, that is to say, symbolic. The FBFI does not have a stance on churches having open or closed communion. The Bible is verbally and plenarily inspired, without error in the original writings, the sole authority of faith and practice, and providentially preserved. A 1979 resolution said, We condemn paraphrases such as living letters and good news for modern man, and the products of unbelieving and liberal scholarship such as the Revised Standard Version, and recognize the unique and special place of the authorized King James Version in the English-speaking world. Further, in 1984, the following was stated, We deplore the rash of new versions which add to or delete from the Word of God, such as the New International Version with special reference to those so-called revisions, which by footnote additions undermine the text. We recognize the unique and special place of the authorized King James Version, providentially preserved by God in the English-speaking world. We reject as heretical the concept that any translation of the Bible is given by inspiration, which has in our generation fostered a cult. We believe firmly that inspiration ceased upon the closure of the canon of scripture in the original autographs. We likewise reject the practice of exalting any version or translation to the position held uniquely by the original writings. In 1995, they stated, Since no translation can genuinely claim what only may be said of the original inspired writings, any attempt to make a particular English translation the only acceptable translation of fundamentalism must be rejected. Pastors in the FBFI may use different translations of scripture. In the FBFI blog Proclaim and Defend, Kevin Shaw wrote of the FBFI, We do not make the use of a particular translation a test of fellowship, and we do not think it should be. A 2016 position statement on creation says that the Bible teaches six solar days of creation, that God created by his miraculous spoken word, not by any natural process, and this precludes the change from one kind to another, although it allows for subsequent modifications within a kind. The statement also says that humanity descends from a single pair of original humans, Adam and Eve. On humanity's nature, they say that man was created sinless, but chose to transgress and incurred sin, condemnation, and physical and spiritual death. Man is a sinner by nature and by choice and completely depraved. The FBFI teaches the necessity of salvation through Jesus by virtue of his shed blood. It is completely dependent on the grace of God, is a free gift, and received by repentance and faith. On the issue of Lordship Salvation, which is controversial among independent Baptists, a 1997 resolution said in part, The FBF rejects the idea that preaching repentance is legalistic, or the equivalent of requiring sinless perfection. The term Lordship Salvation had meaning a generation ago that is lost on the present generation. To equate a strong emphasis on repentance with the previous error of Lordship Salvation is to fail to understand the temporal context of the earlier controversy. 
We believe that a man is not saved by accepting Christ as Savior while consciously rejecting him as Lord. We believe that repentance means that a man must turn from his self-reliance and the sin that expresses it and turn to Christ as his only hope of salvation. The FBFI affirms a view of eternal security, saying, We believe that God secures and guarantees the final salvation of every true believer and that the genuine believer will continue in his faith and show evidence of his faith in Christ until he meets the Lord. We believe all the elect of God, once saved, are kept by God's power and are secure in Christ forever. The FBFI is not Calvinist, and the statement of faith teaches unlimited atonement. However, they are not as strongly opposed to Calvinism as they are to some other doctrinal disagreements. Tim Richmond, writing in the March-April 2017 edition of the FBFI's Frontline magazine, said, Creating factions and fences over denominational differences, Calvinism, liturgy, Bible versions, is an unhealthy component of the fundamentalism of the past 50 years. Entire sanctification is said to take place only at glorification and not in this life during which the old nature cannot be eradicated. The statement of faith takes a cessationist position, denying Pentecostal and charismatic views, stating, We believe some gifts of the Holy Spirit were temporary. We believe that certain gifts, being miraculous in nature, were prevalent in the church in the first century. They were foundational and transitional. These gifts have ceased, being no longer needed because the scriptures have been completed and the church has been divinely certified. We believe that speaking in tongues was never the common or necessary sign of the filling or baptism of the Spirit. We believe God, in accord with his own will, does hear and answer prayer for the sick and afflicted. They also teach that spirit baptism takes place at salvation. In 1978, an FBFI position paper said, The Fundamental Baptist Fellowship exposes the modern-day charismatic movement as unbiblical, a counterfeit of true Christianity, the catalyst for the formation of the coming One World Church of the Antichrist, and furthermore, denounces the practice of ecstatic speech called unknown tongues as unscriptural, deceptive, and completely unrelated to the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. In a 1993 statement, the FBFI denied the health and wealth craze and name it and claim it doctrine and said that they question any doctrine of prosperity based on seed faith. On the theological system used, they say, We believe in a dispensational understanding of the Bible based on the progressive unfolding of the divine mysteries from God, which result in distinguishable stewardships of God's truth. Another statement says, We believe the church is a body peculiar to the age of grace and entirely distinct from national Israel. On End Times, the Statement of Faith affirms a pre-tribulation rapture and premillennial view, saying, We believe in the imminent return of Christ prior to the inauguration of Daniel's 70th week, at which time all believers in Christ will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and be kept from the promised period of divine wrath upon the earth. Another part of the Statement of Faith says, We believe in the imminent rapture of the church to heaven, followed by a seven-year period of tribulation upon all the earth. At the end of the period of tribulation, Jesus Christ shall come back to earth in power and glory with his church to establish the promised Davidic kingdom. He shall reign for 1,000 years, during which time peace and righteousness will cover the earth, Satan shall be bound, and Israel shall be established in her own land. Marriage is only between one man and one woman. They say in a 2016 resolution, Gender neutralism and transgenderism in any form and expression are contrary to God's will and are incompatible with a God-honoring Christian life. All forms of sexual activity outside of a monogamous heterosexual marriage are forbidden in Scripture. Some of those listed include fornication, adultery, and homosexuality. On divorce and remarriage, a 1993 statement said that the FBF recognizes divergent views among Bible believers and that God's ideal is permanency of marriage. In a 1992 statement, the FBFI called abortion a national sin and urged its continued condemnation. A 1994 statement expressed opposition to assisted suicide. A 1978 resolution stated that the FBFI favors capital punishment. A 1993 resolution set on music, the FBF realizes that the subject of music in the churches is very controversial and that there is a great revolution as many churches move toward contemporary music in order to attract and evangelize. We contend, however, that music is not amoral and that its main purpose is worship and edification. To this end, acceptable music must exalt Christ, minister to the Spirit, and edify the believer. We do not believe that this is true of most contemporary music. We believe that the essential religious music of the day perverts the message of the gospel of Christ and creates a strange fire. In 2001, a resolution urged discernment and caution in using praise choruses. In an article in the May-June 2010 issue of Frontline Magazine called The Believer's Adornment, it was stated, Our adorning should be gender distinctive. Deuteronomy 22.5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. 
It is not my intention in this article to discuss whether or not slacks of all varieties are that which pertaineth to a man, but God clearly desires for there to be a difference in men's and women's attire. An article called Modesty, a Lost Cause in the same edition said, Sometimes I feel that modesty is a lost cause. It is becoming increasingly difficult to buy modest clothing. Everything is getting lower, tighter, shorter, and more provocative. What are we to do? Sewing is becoming a lost art, but for those who do sew, this is a great solution. You can hire a seamstress to sew for you or to alter existing clothing to make it modest. A 2011 resolution stated opposition to consumption of alcohol as a beverage. Ministers associated with FBFI often teach tithing. For example, in the May-June 2000 issue of Frontline Magazine, the article, A Checklist for Choosing a Good Local Church, lists as one thing to check that the church believes and teaches the biblical principle of tithing. The statement of faith teaches a doctrine of separation. First, separation of the local church from all affiliation and fellowship with false teachers who deny the verities of the Christian faith, and from those who are content to walk in fellowship with unbelief and inclusivism. Second, separation of the individual believer from all worldly practices. And third, separation of church and state. In 1980, a statement was made calling Fundamental Baptists to shun association with the Southern Baptist Convention. A 1992 statement called the Roman Catholic Church a satanic counterfeit to the true Church of Christ. They state that Christ's church is neither a political body nor a means for social justice. On church polity, they say, We believe that the local church is an autonomous body having the God-ordained right of self-government, free from the interference of any religious hierarchy, solely responsible to preserve its own internal integrity, maintain pure doctrine and practice, elect its own officers, ordain men to the ministry, settle its own internal affairs, and determine the method and extent of its cooperation with other churches. The proper form of church government is congregational. The Statement of Faith says that the two scriptural offices of the local church are pastor and deacon. In a 1992 statement on pastoral authority, they said, The FBF believes that God calls men to the gospel ministry and puts them in the position of local church pastors, and that therefore they should be shown proper respect. We, however, utterly repudiate the prostituting of this position in which a pastor becomes a virtual dictator over his congregation with accountability to no individual. The Bible condemns those who would be lords over God's heritage and urges leadership to lead by being examples to the flock. A 1978 position statement said, We oppose the ordination of women to the gospel ministry. Though colleges are not officially affiliated with the FBFI, some that have been very close to it include Maranatha Baptist University in Watertown, Wisconsin, and Bob Jones University in Greenville, South Carolina. Here on Ready to Harvest, there are many more videos on Baptists. Click over to see the playlist or watch this video on the General Association of Regular Baptist Churches.